the talk today is Michael Servetus, Unitarian Martyr, based on the book Out of the Flames by Lawrence and Nancy Goldstone. This book was quite informative. Wikipedia describes Servetus as a Spanish theologian, physician, cartographer, and Renaissance humanist who was the first European to correctly describe pulmonary circulation. He was versed in mathematics, astronomy, meteorology, astrology, anatomy, jurisprudence, languages, poetry, and the study of the Bible. He was born Miguel Cerveto in the northeast corner of Spain on September 29, 1511, to a family of minor gentry. This is the time of Charles V, the last emperor of the Holy Roman Empire. France was ruled by his rival Francis I, and England was ruled by Henry VIII. The story is also wrapped around the new interest in books. This was also the time of a new high demand for books since Gutenberg developed the printing press in 1455. There was an increase in literacy and the wealthy had started to collect books. There was also a high demand for books written by the universities. By 1500 AD, more than 300 printing presses had been set up across Europe. There was a, a movement labeled humanism that was the major intellectual and literary movement in progress at the time. It was replacing scholasticism. In scholastic study, all knowledge was divided into four strictly delineated areas, theology, philosophy, jurisprudence, and medicine. Students studied a very specific set of texts and would defend their interpretations, but they never were allowed to question the validity of the text. And they spent years doing this, like 10, 15 years in college, doing, looking at this minutia of the text. Well, the humanists started with the same basic text, but then they expanded them to include grammar, rhetoric, history, poetry, and moral philosophy. And all of this was based on Greek and Latin texts. And uh, basic philosophy encouraged free inquiry, and an outward perspective, so totally different than the inward perspective looking at the minutia that the um, scholastic people had done. So, And there was an emphasis on personal worth of the individual, the central importance of human values rather than religious dogma. So these humanist scholars were tolerated as long as they didn't directly challenge the church's authority or its interpretation of theological or scientific principles. So this is, in the t this is the time into which Servetus was born. Servetus was looked on as a prodigy in his early life. He was especially gifted in languages, which is what got him into trouble. By 13, he could read Spanish, French, Greek, Latin, and Hebrew. Now in most of the Christian Europe, Hebrew was a forbidden language until it was made legal in France in 1531. Um, and that was because it was some of the, the Bible was written in Hebrew and the clergy wanted to keep control of that. Um, so this meant that he could read the Old Testament in its original form. So he was sent off to the University um, of uh, Zaragoza at age 13. Um, and he became the secretary of um, Juan de Quintana, um, who was a well-known humanist professor. So by the time he was 14, he was reading all the assigned texts, plus the classics and the humanist texts and the German Martin Luther. So Quintana left for the University of Barcelona and Servetus went with him because he was his secretary. So at age 16, 
His father sent him to the religiously orthodox town of Toulouse and the University of Toulouse. Um, and so Quintana gave him a two-year leave from being his secretary. Uh, none of them realized that, though, although the town was conservative, the university was a hotbed of <laughs> radical thought. <laughs> it was here that he Latinized his name to Michael Servetus, um, as was the fashion among the students at the time. The students read widely, with the most subversive book they read being the Bible, both the uh, Erasmus um, translation and the Computentia Polyglot Bible. Bible, which was edited by the humanist Cardinal Exmeris, my Latin isn't good, and approved by the Vatican in 1522. Now the interesting thing about this Bible is it had one column of Hebrew and Greek and a parallel column of the Latin Vulgate. And since Servetus could read all of those languages, he could see the difference between the original text and the Vulgate translation. Uh, he could also by this time read the Quran in Arabic. <laughs> He's 17 years old at this point. Uh, so he was not anti-Christian. On the contrary, he felt that uh, a return to the biblical scholarship would save Christianity. So after two years, he had a two-year leave, he re returned to uh, Zaragoza's service. A and Zaragoza had now become confessor to Charles V and was part of his inner circle. So Servetus got to observe the e extravagant surroundings of Charles's coronation when he was elevated to um, the head of the Holy Roman Empire. And he resigned his position because he did not feel that all this pomp and serpency with people kissing the Pope's feet and such was appropriate. Um, so then Servetus went to the University of Basel in Switzerland, uh, which had been established by Pope Pius II based on humanist principles. By the time he got there, the town was openly Protestant. Servetus stayed with the town's leading Protestant figure who had been part of this revolution. But he thought that the reforms had not gone far enough and he was critical of his host. He insisted that all Roman corruption went back to the Trin Trinity. Well, this newly established leader was now much more interested in maintaining the status quo now that he was very influential at the town, then examining doctrine. And um, after 10 months, he denounced his troublesome guest who fled to Strasbourg. So this was in uh, 1531. So a, a, in Strasbourg, a supporter put in, him in touch with a printer, Johann Setzer, who agreed to publish Servetus' first book on the errors of the Trinity. Um, the book was very small format, three and a half by six inches, you know, so you could hide it in your pocket, 120 pages, because they knew it was heretical. It was divided into seven sections. It was not his best writing, but it was called a prodigious piece of scholarship. He cited over 30 sources uh, in Latin, Greek, Hebrew, and Arabic and quoted or alluded to 52 of the 66 books of the Bible and six books of the Apocrypha. So this was incredibly well scholarship. Um, he wrote it as though he was addressing an opponent and fiercely attacking, often ridiculing him. He thought that viewing the Holy Spirit as a separate being was um, practical tritheism no better than atheism. Um, and he said that the doctrine of the Trinity itself was inconceivable, worse than all its, uh, it, it, and worst of all, it incurs the ridicule of the Mohammedans and the Jews, because of course they were monotheistic. He observed that, I know not what madness is in men that does not see 
that in the scriptures, every sort of unity of God is always referred to as the Father. Um, the, he didn't intend this as a heretical book, uh, but it certainly was. <laughs> and um, it was filled with passionate er earnestness, warm piety, a reverence for the scriptures, and a mythical and overpowering love of Christ. Um, remember, he is still a very young man at this point. He expressed that the concept of the Trinity had been imposed on Christian Christianity in error, um, but the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit were different aspects of God, not separate and distinct beings. The, pub, pub, the book was published without the printer's imprint, mm -hmm. but heresy sold well, and the book completely sold out very quickly and was discussed everywhere. Interestingly enough, the concept of the Trinity was sort of going out of vogue with the reformers. Um, Luther left it completely out of his catechism. Um, but some theorize that this frontal attack on the Trinity um, brought the argument to its head prematurely and led to a hardening of the arguments in its favor. So without Servetus, we might not have the concept of the Trinity in, in the Christian church. Um, obviously, the book was banned, and Servetus was sentenced to death by the Spanish Inquisition in absentia and denounced by reformers. He then published a less strident book called Two Dialogues on the Trinity, which was also banned. And he escaped from both, the, both camps, the Catholics and the Protestants. Uh, so now at age 22, <laughs> he enrolled at the University of Paris as Michael de uh, Villeneuve, I guess, at, I, my French is also not good, V-I-L-L-E-N-E-U-V-E. -E. <laughs> what is Michael of the New City. Anyway, he um, ultimately aligned himself with the, Roma with the most radical factions at the university. Surprise, surprise. Uh, John Calvin was also there and wrote his first book on Seneca, which bombed. Um, the, the radical professor, Kopp, um, was being inaugurated in the head of the theological school, which had been very conservative, uh, conservative up to this point. And Calvin helped Kopp write his inaugural speech, which was given November 1st, 1533, was labeled heretical immediately. The reformers had overplayed their hand and all involved had to flee from arrest. Um, reform in France was driven underground again. And at this point, Calvin already just hated Servetus because Servetus as a young, has, had published this really successful book and Calvin's was not successful. So he was very jealous of him. Um, they were both quietly able to return to Paris the next year when things calmed down. Calvin wrote his bleak but carefully reasoned book, Institutes of the Christian Religion. His basic philosophy was man is nothing, God is everything. Man is small, corrupt, and weak. Free will is an illusion. God alone decides who will be saved, so predestination. An individual cannot alter that decision by good works or other exertions. The decision is made before he is born. Through Christ, man as a species participates in salvation. To understand God, people must turn to the pastors and teachers of the true church, which Cal Calvin is ready to define and, of course, be. Um, original sin, this Calvin continuing original sin is a hereditary corruption and depravity of our nature extending to all parts of uh, the body politic and transmitted from parent to child so that all without exception are originally depraved. What a positive yeah. Calvin's book, uh, Calvin's book that he wrote as a result of this 
ran eventually to um, over a thousand pages and was first printed in 1536 um, and this one caused a sensation unlike his very disappointing first book. In the meantime, Servetus um, had went to Lyon uh, because he had to get out of Paris. And um, which uh, Lyon was the second, at that time, was the second largest city in France and a kind of a wide open um, city. Um, and Servetus went there because he'd already burned his bridges in both Switzerland and Germany. You know, he's really burning his bridge. He's not exactly tactful. Uh, Lyon had its own independent printing and publishing industry. And so that um, one of the um, publishers hired Servetus to proofread and then as an editor uh, to update Ptolemy's geography. Um, Servetus used the oldest Latin and Greek editions that he could find to create a more authentic book called The Eight Books of the Account of Geography by Claudius Ptolemy of Alexandria. This version was so extensive and improved that some have claimed that Servetus was the father of comparative geog geography. He read and corrected many medical texts and was firmly safe and acceptable, accepted under his alias in, um, in Lyon. Um, but things calmed down in France and the following year he returned to the University of Paris, this time to study medicine. Well, the study of medicine was stuck at the time of, of Galen, um, who's, who wrote his texts in AD 130. And the 16th century church restricted the science of medicine and anatomy to Galen. Um, so you couldn't say anything that wasn't in, in Galen. However, in 1525, Galen was retranslated into Greek, creating two versions of, of, Gal of Galen, of the official Galen, and that ultimately opened up the field of study of medicine and anatomy. Servetus became the assistant to a professor of anatomy. This is in Paris. And he also was a popular lecturer on geography, astronomy, and mathematics. He wrote a book, The Syrups, instructing how to concoct uh, medications that were described in Galen's text. Um, always a genius for indiscretion. He started criticizing the other professors. He wrote a scathing pamphlet for which he was tried and was forced to withdraw it. During this time, he, it was during this time that he made the intuitive leap of understanding the circulatory system. Um, but he didn't write it up at the time. It wasn't published until his final um, and deadly book. So Servetus became a physician uh, in Lyon, but was not accepted there and moved to Vienna. Um, where he treated rich and poor alike. Um, he, w he was a physician to the, to the um, elite in Vienna and even worked through the, the plague of 1542, kind of ignoring the personal risk. And things w were going well for him and probably would have continued to go well, except that in 1541 he was asked to edit a one-volume edition of the Pagnini Bible. In the preface, he criticized biblical scholars' ignorance of Hebrew and history, saying that they were too apt to overlook the historical and literal sense of the scriptures and hunted instead for mystical meaning where none existed. Uh, then he agreed to edit the full seven volume. So this rekindled his passion for theology. So he started debating um, theology and the biblical underprintings with a friend of his, Jean Fillon, who was totally, of course, outmatched by Servetus with his extensive knowledge of the Bible. And in um, 1546, Fillon set up a debate through letters between Servetus and his friend Calvin. 
<laughs> Calvin who had, of course, very different views. Calvin who already absolutely hated Servetus. But that doesn't stop Servetus. <laughs> So after six years of writing in secret, Servetus published the restoration of Christianity in 1552. It contains several themes, including the injustice of infant baptism, the, um, the um, contortions of the scriptures, the myth of the Trinity, and the assertion that God existed in all people and things. It was published in secret and not uh, by the publisher, not by the regular employees. They, they went out in the woods and hired other people to publish this thing. Um, and the publisher, again, did not acknowledge that he was the publisher in the book. Uh, the first batch was 500 books. Some were hidden in bales of hay bound for a book fair in Franklin. A second batch went to Geneva, big mistake, and some were sent to Lyon to the other um, office of this publisher for safekeeping. Well, in Geneva, of course, nothing happens in Geneva without Calvin knowing about it. And it, he right away got a hold of a copy of the book and burned it. And he got one of the Geneva merchants to write his cousin in Lyon to alert the authorities that, about the book. Um, so the authorities were properly alarmed by this heretical text and um, went to arrest Servetus. They ended up duping him into going to the palace to tend somebody who was sick. And um, he was questioned about his book and his letters to Calvin. But at night, he because he was um, a member of the upper class at this point, he wasn't put in a jail cell. He was in a... A, more like a bedroom upstairs and he escaped in his night clothes by going across a, a roof and then jumping down. Um, so later he was um, sentenced in abstentia uh, and the book, the books in the bales of hay were burned. Um, Calvin's idea was to get rid of all evidence of these books. Um, so Servetus decides to escape south to Naples, but for some unknown reason, he goes to Geneva and said, on a Saturday of all things, which meant on, there would, nothing happens on Sunday, um, he could have trans, you know, traveled out of Geneva because everybody has to go to church on Sunday. So he went to church and was captured because, of course, people recognized him. Um, he tried, he, so he was accused and tried to defend himself in front of the council. Now remember, this is a Protestant town at this point. And um, at times he was directly debating Calvin. Um, and, and Calvin was not actually a real well-liked, shall we say, in mm -hmm. the town. Um, very controlling, very... Um, uh, dictatorial and so there were there were people who were not happy with Calvin some of them were on the the city council um, so they they re, the original charges could have been um, met by banishment but that didn't satisfy Calvin um, so they changed the list of <laughs> charges, to a list of 30, for 30 charges saying that Servetus was a disreputable person and a menace to society. And then later they changed it to 37 charges, much more sophisticated charges, clearly written by Calvin. Um, and they changed the debate from being an in-person debate in front of the council to a written debate. Unfortunately for Servetus, libertines in the town who, who Servetus was depending on decided not to challenge uh, Calvin at this point, and Servetus's fate was sealed. He was convicted of 
on, on October 26, 1553, and burned the next day at the stake with uh, the, ar the book lashed to his arm. And Calvin didn't go to the, the all the citizens of the or the the big wigs went to the uh, to the his death, but Calvin chickened out and didn't go for whatever reason. But Calvin, after this, was widely denounced by people for the whole affair of Servetus's death. Um, and other Trinitarians at the, or anti-Trinitarians at the time became much more cautious in their writing um, because of Calvin being killed. Yeah, but interestingly enough, his his Calvin or Servetus's writing was more widely disseminated because um, he wasn't there, you know, to, to to be damaged by it. And some people took his work and. Um, Republished it under their own names. Um, his and and when they um, were researching his the location of his book in this in this book, there's only three copies remaining in the world. Calvin did a very good job of wiping them out. One of them is Calvin's own copy, which he did not destroy because he had cut out the preface preface of the book. And mailed it off to was it Lyon, I think at, you know as part of this um, to get Servetus, and so there's the the book with the pages missing is still in existence. So people know that that's Calvin's copy. So even though he was determined to destroy everything, he didn't destroy his own, which I uh. It's Edinburgh, yeah. There's one in Edinburgh, one John Hopkins. In Germany, someplace was it? I can't. Anyway, there's three, but it was copied. So I mean, we know what it says because it was copied out. So his writing ended ended up influencing the beginnings of the Unitarian movement in Poland and Transylvania. Um, and led to um, a split between the Calvinish, Bo or, uh, Calvinish Polish bro brethren um, in uh, 1565 uh, in Transylvania, or Poland rather, um, so that that was really the beginning of the Unitarian influence in, in uh, Transylvania and Poland, which then eventually spread to Holland and then to England sometime later. So um, so that is Michael Servetus, a fascinating, amazing man. Yeah. Knowing all those languages is what really got him into trouble. OK, uh, we could have time for questions. Amazing man. His, his family were kind of minor gentry in, um, in Spain. Yeah, the, uh, that's what, and, and that's why it was so significant that reading and book collecting and stuff had taken off in the 1400s, in the 15th century. This was a huge change from when books and reading were only in the monasteries and were handwritten, which is why there was this push for the printing press, because these wealthy people had, I mean, all the books that they had in their libraries that they were wanting to collect were all handwritten. And so that, that you know, Gutenberg saw an opening here for an um, entrepreneurial opening, shall we say. Um, so the fact that they could then print these uh, in more copies than just handwritten was huge and they were bought right up. I mean, this was the big, like I say, it was the internet at the time. This was the big thing. And the fact that people realized, you know, hey, this is an open thing. I can, t I can take what I think and, and get somebody to print it and put it out there for people. I mean, this is really the first time that that could happen. Um, kind of the, uh, what do they call that when you publish your own books now? Vanity press. It was sort of the beginning of the vanity press of the, of the time. And the book, yeah. 
Yeah, this, um, I got it out of this, uh, out of the flames, which the book group read, and that has not only Servetus, but it's got all of the book stuff in it. If, if I recall, one of the books was just tucked in somebody's library, wasn't it, Rose? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I, so I don't think he realized, you know, I mean, you know, they, there were people, all these rich people were collecting books, and somebody collected it and stuck it in his library, and uh, the Inquisition didn't find it. Rose is the expert on the book part of it. Yeah, John Sigismund was the first ruler to um, have uh, declare a re religious freedom in a country. He was um, believed in the Trinitar or the Unitarian concept, but did not impose it on his country. Just opened it up for the freedom of religion, and then when he left power, it changed back again. But he, he is really known as the the first leader to promote religious freedom. Thank you so much, Barb, for the <laughs>